just looking at um, recommendations as well, you want to make sure that you're using them to the full advantage. So thinking outside of your site and where can you use them actually off your site as well. In-store kiosks, um, they can highlight trending or top selling items, maybe even close to where they're located in the store. Printed receipts, so you could feature add-on items related to what they've just purchased. Mobile applications can feature products within them. And of course, you know, probably the most common other use of recommendations uh, other than the site is including them in emails. So Experian actually looked at the open rates of emails that just had a personalized subject line, and they saw adding the shopper's name uh, saw increases of open rates of 13 to 40 percent. Personalization does have a very impact, a very big impact on people. Um, so now when you have your recommendations, you want to make sure that you are measuring um, how they are working on your site and looking at that over time as well. So revenue is, of course, the one that people do focus on the most. Um, so that's including conversion rate, the revenue, average order size, and average order value. Then there's overall site metrics um, that are also worth evaluating, looking at the time on site, the bounce rate, the number of pages viewed, and the amount of returning visitors. Once you've looked at um, what your statistics are for each individual strategy, you do want to make sure that you uh, are completing the loop, so identifying again those aims that were critical to your business and seeing thinking about that in terms of what strategies you're using and testing out new ones. This was just to, to highlight an example of what we saw with one of our customers, Michael C. Fina. Looking in the first 60 days, uh, an average of about a third of their customers who saw the recommendations were clicking on at least one of the products shown. So this is another customer of ours, Footwear Etc. Uh, so they've done a really good job uh, on the checkout page, just mapping product types to the various accessories and also not just that, but ensuring there's really a mix of products and they're really clear, you know, in their title as well, that the products shown are based on what is in, actually in the cart. This is an example of Noel Leeming's um, product page. They do have to show a lot of the specifications and details by default. Um, so rather than putting the recommendations underneath all of that information and near the bottom of the page, they've made them vertical here to get them as high on the page and as visible as possible. So there are some very simple elements you can look at and, and that you can change right now uh, that can help your recommendations uh, improve their performance. Uh, you do want to focus on the experience um, versus algorithms and data, um, and you want to make sure that it makes sense for the shopper at every single point in their journey. And of course, for every aspect, you want to always be accurately measuring your performance, um, testing new ideas, and learning from what your results are.